Hey, welcome back, guys. I've got the Wizards 2002 Volkswagen Beetle here. It only has 269,000 miles on it, and he needs to sell it. What, what are we doing here? I'm, I'm selling your car. No. Yeah, aren't you, you've had it for like three months. Aren't you tired of it yet? No, I love this car. Really? I'm not selling this Just car. Just as much as you love that Ducati? Yeah, well, I love this car. I don't love the Ducati anymore. Really? Really? I think you can mark my words there that I, I, he sold that, didn't he? Yeah, well, this one's not getting sold. Okay. I love Squirtle. Okay, I'll get back behind the scenes. All right. Don't you guys just love Mrs. Wizard trying to sell my cars out from underneath of me? She's just trying to keep me on my toes, just being silly. So, anyways, let's get back to business. There's some, there's a lot going on in the shop right now. We're going to introduce that, and then we're going to talk some about Squirtle, do an ownership update of Squirtle right after this. So, like I said, there's a whole lot going on in the Wizard Shop this week. As you see behind me. Ben Pack has actually decided to replace every single lift I own. For free, guys. For free. So, that's what we got going on. We got the first lift down. It was actually a very old lift, and I'm glad to see that one go. All week long, we're going to be having this going on and having new lifts installed. Actually, the guy that's here, if you want to come on over, Al. This is Al from... Al's Equipment Service? Yes, Al's Equipment Service. Yep. How long you guys been in business? Uh, over 30 years. 30 years? Yeah, yeah. I've been doing this for longer than anything else I've ever done. So. Yeah. Well, I was talking to Bob. You guys have heard of EuroAsian Bob on my channel a lot. And I was talking about getting these lifts installed. He actually recommended Al. He said, you need to get a hold of Al and get him in to get these installed. So I took his advice. And that's what we're doing. We're going to include a little link below to his phone number if you guys are in this area and you want some lifts installed. Or what else do you guys do? Uh, well, we we were in the in the lift business and uh, tire machines and balancers. Uh, now all we do is lifts anymore. We lifts just, anymore? Yeah, we consolidated, and that's all we do. Just okay. Lifts. We're going to film a little beetle over here, and I'll get out of your hair and let you do what you was doing. Absolutely, absolutely. Been a pleasure working with you. I'm very excited to get these lifts replaced. I can't wait till we get them all done, all brand new lifts. These, these two older ones I have on the ends have been doing the job, but they're, they're really getting, especially that one down there he's taken apart, he's, he's already removed. That one was getting to the end of its life. This one still has a lot of life left in it, but it still has a lot of age too. So anyways, back to cars is what we're here for. Like Mrs. Wizard said, this is my 2002 Volkswagen TDI Beetle. 269,000 miles on it. I got it at auction. Actually, Hoovy found it for me at an auction for $800. And if you click on the link below, you'll go to the previous video of all that we did to it when we first got it. Quite a big list of things we did. But in the last several weeks that I've been driving it, I've had to do a couple more things. I've done a few updates, and that's what I was going to show you guys today, what I've done to it. The first thing that I did is we talked about sanding it and painting it and everything, and the rest of the paint was so nice, I decided that I would just sand and clear coat what it had. And although it doesn't look like a nice factory fresh paint job, for what it is, it looks pretty decent. Let's take a look at it. In the previous videos, you'll see it's a giant white, like a big diaper rash here. It's kind of dirty here. It's been raining today, but it's all blue again. You can see a line here where the clear coat, the old clear coat ended. It's an $800 car, guys. I'm not going to put two grand into a paint job into this thing. All through here was all white rash, nasty looking, and it's blue again. And it kind of, from a distance, going down the road, you don't hardly tell that that's even had any had anything done like that to it. Let's take a look at the interior and some of the few things I've done in there. Then we got a couple more things under the engine bay. Let me get the door for you, Mrs. Wizard. Sir. We saw in the previous video that the seat cushion here was completely destroyed. I actually cut the bottom of a seat cover and just used 3M adhesive and glued it to it. The heated seat still works amazingly through all that. It works very well. It's just a beater car to go back and forth to work. I've been getting about 38, 39 miles per gallon, which I hear on the automatic is about all you can get. If you want more than that, you need a, 
a manual, a stick shift. The center portion there where the radio stack is and everything was all crushed and cracked. I got a good one on eBay, a used one, and replaced that so it doesn't look so ugly anymore. The radio before would just dangling. It would, if you hit a bump, it would almost fall out on you. So that's, that's been solved and it's not doing that anymore. And just cleaned it up a little bit. There's still some more cleaning that can be done, but it's coming along pretty nicely for a little daily driver. Let's walk around the Beetle. As you guys already saw, it's got, it's got new hubs, new brakes, new tires, all kinds of things like that new on it. But one of the things I did replace was this center LED light here. The old one, it's like they used silicone and just smashed it in there and glued it on. I wasn't too happy about that, so I just replaced it. It was pretty cheap. One thing I also fixed was this. That feature didn't work when I got this car to be able to pop the, pop the rear hatch. All it was was some electronics inside here were bad. I replaced those. It's back in business again. Let's take a look under the hood. So. One of the things, issue I've been having driving this thing is I had it driving perfect, everything's going along, and it would just go into limp mode. It would go to turn, basically turn the turbo off. And it would run and drive, but it'd be severely underpowered, and I had to, you guys already know from the previous video, I put a turbo actuator on here, and I got the turbo working again, but it would frequently just go into limp mode. I finally diagnosed it to a bad airflow sensor, which is right here. I did the crazy thing that people always do, and I tried to go and order the cheap Chinese one online. I installed that one, and it bit me. It, it worked even worse than the bad one that I had in here. I finally broke down and got one from Worldpack, got the OEM, I think it's a Bosch one, and installed it. And that completely cured that problem. It doesn't do that anymore at all. That's kind of a lesson to you guys. These cheap $50 airflow sensors that you see for any, any brand car, you just probably should walk away from those. Those are not something you're going to want to put on your vehicle. I have never seen that actually work, the cheap airflow sensors. And I proved again for the 50,000th time that that is not a wise decision. You're going to have to break down and buy the expensive OEM airflow sensor if you want to plug it in and be done with it. Hey, car wizard. How much was the OEM one? I think it was 180 bucks. Most people were like, ouch, I don't want to pay that. I'll get the $50 one. Don't do it, guys. You'll go through three or four of them before you get a good one, and it may last three months, and it's bad. So that's not a very good deal there. Another thing that I tried to do, it's kind of a 50-50 shot, is to get rid of the EGR valve operation because it cokes up the intake manifold on these so bad. So I bought this on eBay. I put it on and I lost. I was in the 50 percentile that fails. So the ECM uses the airflow sensor and various other sensors to determine what's going on with the engine and it could tell. It could tell that something was going on here and it would throw the check engine light on. There have been people that say they put this on and the check engine light never did come on. Never. But mine sure did. That's just my luck. So I put the EGR system back together, put everything like it was, and it's happy again. So I just, with that many miles on it, I'm just going to deal with it and let it do its thing. The last issue that I've had with this is on a really cold day, I don't have very good heat out of this car. Go down the road, like if it's 10 degrees outside, there's no heat out of the vent. I had Junior Mint put a thermostat on it, thinking that's a quick little fix, and it didn't solve anything. And basically what it's come down to be is that there's nice hot heat going to the thermostat, but inside the dash, the, either the actual blend door flap is broken or the blend door motor is bad. And we're getting ready to get into spring. I'm just not even going to mess with that right now. I'm not going to pull my whole dash and take care of that. I'll just do that in the fall when that comes around. I'll figure out something with that. But So Squirtle is not a 10 degree weather car. That's when I hop in a different car and take it. Another thing I've also replaced is this there's four glow plugs you can see this black tube shaped thing that's the glow plug harness those warm the air coming in when it's really cold to help it start a lot easier 
And amazingly, in some of the mornings we've had three and four or five degrees outside, it started to ride out. You know, and these automatic transmissions, people say 150,000 miles and they're done. This one's got 269,000 miles and it shifts and drives beautifully. I'm just going to do like the old saying, drive it till the wheels fall off. For much as I paid for it, I'll just keep on going with it. That's pretty much all I've had to do since the last video inside the engine bay. Those are the few little things I've had to do to make the engine happy. There are a few cosmetic things that I could do to make this a little better. I could buff out the headlights and do a few other things, but for what, what I paid for it, what I use it for, I haul engine parts in the back of this thing. It's not that big of a deal for it to not be all that pretty. The last thing that I've done to this that I really enjoyed is I removed the exhaust and put a glass pack in place of it and then straight out the back. It sounds really good. It actually seems to, fl feels like it flows a little better. But I'm in the drive through at McDonald's or whatever and I take off and I can just hear the turbo whine. It's, it's really cool. Squirtle has been a really, really good car. For what I paid for it and how many miles are on it, I can't complain. I get in it, I go to work every day, I go home. It never fails. It never leaves me on the side of the road. I really, really can't complain about this car. So the question is, can you go to auction and find a high mileage car is actually worth it? Yes, you can, if you do the work yourself. If I had bought this car and paid a shop to do everything I've done to it, I would have more, triple what into it what I paid. So that probably wouldn't come out very well. Shop-wise, how much I've put into it, probably $2,500 if I had to pay a shop to do it. Now, being that I just got all the parts, it's probably $600, $700, or something along that lines. But I'm just going to keep driving it and keep driving it. And I'll, maybe I'll give a six-month update and a year update. I, I know Miss Wizard wants to sell this car, but I don't have any intention of selling Squirtle. Squirtle's my little friend. He gets me to work, gets me back home, and he sounds really cool. There's no reason to get rid of Squirtle. I didn't say I want you to get rid of it. I just figure it's about time. No, it's not about time. I'm going to keep this little guy. I did, though, just pick up another car today, and that's going to be in the next video or two. You guys are going to like this car. It's going to be really cool. Also, pretty soon coming up is Concourse Elegance at Melia Island. I will be there. I'll be at Cars and Coffee. I'll also be at the Concourse. I'm going to be helping a friend out with a car transfer, and you will see that in a future video, what car it is and which friend it is. If you're interested in what tools I use, check my Amazon affiliates page in the link below. We also have tools for sale in the UK on the Amazon Affiliate UK page. If you haven't been to Auto Trader Oversteer recently, you go check out some of the articles I've written. I've been writing for them. I've been submitting also small little video clips, really cool content there that's probably not on the Car Wizard channel. And if you haven't subscribed to the Car Wizard channel, go ahead and do that now. Click the link. You won't be disappointed. More cool videos to come, guys. Thanks for watching. So you know, Car Wizard, in a couple of months, uh, you'll, you're going to sell this. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm going to keep this one. This one's really cool. Sure. Sure. No, this one's cool. I'm going to hold on to this one. This, this is a really cool bike. Everyone out there, just you wait and see. Right, yeah, right, whatever.